So, oh, the previous presentation was really nice and really complex. Mine is not so complicated, but still I struggled a lot with it. So I will keep a presentation about this cute cube here. Uh, it's a little bit disassembled right now, but I will tell you why. So let's start. This is the table of contacts, what I will talk about. I will try to guess how much time these points will take. So, at first I will talk about myself, then about uh, the plan, then how I uh, designed the system, and I will talk about a little bit about the software, then how I tried to make it, and the uh, last part is a takeaway, what did I learn from this project, because uh, project is good if you learn something new. Okay, let's start. So, this is me, I'm Marton. These are my main attributes. Uh, <laughs> also, this is my role model from a very good manga. Maybe you know it. The Battle Angel Alito. I see some similarities. Okay, so take aside the joke. Let's talk about uh, a little bit my professional background. Uh, I was learning mechanical engineering for several years. Then, at a certain point, I realized that uh, most of the things what are invented in mechanical side, uh, most of the solutions are existing for pff, hundreds of years, so it's not so interesting. I mean, it's not, not so fresh. So if I want to do something fresh, something cool, then I should do some software engineering. But the time I realized it, I got a little bit old, so it was no time for me to go to university, that's the time when I found Green Fox Academy and it was a lot of fun. For example, this was really <laughs> funny. So, if you know somebody who wants to go to this direction, I re recommend it. It was the part of uh, the commercial. <laughs> also, thanks Petra for inviting me. Uh, after Green Fox, uh, Bosch immediately hired me. I spent one year there. Uh, on the technical side, it wasn't so interesting. I learned uh, some C++ and Qt framework, but the good part was the people I met there. So some of them are still my friends today. It was really fun. After Bosch, I went to Meotromotive. It's a small Hungarian developer company. Um, they are providing um, full solutions, uh, mostly for Mm, proof of concept. So some of Hungarian uh, startups are uh, coming to this company and uh, tell them, oh, we have a good idea, but uh, we don't have the knowledge for it. And the people there, there are some mechanical engineers, some electricians, and some programmers. So most of the time I was programming uh, in embedded environment also some uh, uh, native softwares I made there. And I brought two examples. For example, this is a very cool project. It's called the Clift, a smart climbing wall, because it has LEDs. What, what has LEDs? That's, that's smart. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe I should uh, name this smart cube. Uh, so it looks really cool, cool from the left side. Uh, every touch has a sensor in it and it can glow in different colors, but uh, what could be behind the wall? Me, of course, with a lot of cables and stuff. So this was a really good project. And the second one I will mention is a huge vending machine. Uh, it was planned for keeping, I think, around 1,000 bottles of uh, mineral water, and you could bring back the used bottles and buy new ones. Uh, at Alle, um, there was uh, only one of these uh, unit existed. Sadly, uh, it got disassembled, but it was fun to make it. So this is a picture when I had a lot of fun to make it. I think this was took after uh, a 24 hour of coding. So <laughs> that's why I'm wearing glasses. Uh, yep. Then, uh, after that, 
I found a really interesting offer to Vienna. There was a new startup and they uh, tried to make a, a cannabis harvester machine. So I said, what? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's do this. So I spent almost one year at Vienna uh, doing this kind of stuff. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, this is, this is full legit. So this cannabis has no THC inside, only CBD. Um, I was the only one uh, software engineer there, so I had to make the embedded part also on the software side, but sadly the company bankrupt, so I came back to Hungary, and this is when I joined uh, Norbit Hungary. It's a kind of small uh, Hungarian uh, part of a huge uh, Norway company. We mostly make uh, sonars, radars, and everything that has to do something with the sea and ships and, and stuff. I wanted to put some pictures here, but currently I'm employed there, so I think that's not allowed. Only this one, because every, <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> every week uh, we have a grill party at our own balcony, so it's pretty easy to impress me with these kind of stuff. Okay, <laughs> let's go to the next part, the plan. So I had a request to make uh, a timer for a kitchen. Uh, the current uh, products what on the market right now, for example this one, uh, is not so cool because all of these numbers and minutes are fixed there, they just painted there, you have to control them with <coughs> buttons, um, yeah. So I thought, why not make a, a better one with six sides, six, uh, six changeable uh, counters, and of course it should make some funny noises. Okay, so what did I need for this? I need a microcontroller. Uh, I choose ASB 8260s, and why? Because I already have some at home. Uh, yeah, you, you must have some of these at home. Lately, uh, I found that it wasn't the best choice because uh, the power consumption is uh, not so low, so it will drain the battery in time. And um, at first, I was thinking I should add some uh, um, Wi-Fi connectivity to it, but. A simple device like this doesn't need features like that. So next time I will choose another kind of uh, controller. A second one, I had to choose uh, a LED display. I choose these really cheap uh, models. I guess. They are really easy to do uh, to uh, work with because they have some shift registers inside. So I just have to. Uh, pass out uh, some bytes to it and it will forward it to the next one. It's like a, like an addressable LED or something. Uh, so it's quite easy. Uh, then I needed a charge controller. Luckily, uh, there is already a pre-made one. So also it uh, contains uh, an AC, uh, a DC-DC converter. So it can provide five volts or three volts to my system. And if I'm not going to plan to uh, control it with buttons, I came up with an idea we should control it with motion. So this is why I choose this uh, accelerometer. Uh, why did I choose it? Because it has six axes, uh, Z, X, Y, and also the rotation to these uh, orientations. And it was quite easy to, uh, to work with it, and the buzzer. Sadly, I didn't find uh, a small buzzer, so it didn't fit so well in the box. But I thought uh, about it later. So, this is a really simple uh, system design. Uh, you can see that I chained all these displays, so I don't have to use a lot of cables. Yeah, it looks pretty, pretty simple in the picture, but not here. 
Okay, so uh, the architecture is what I'm going to show now is the, the current one. Of course, uh, I didn't start to uh, to make the wall thing uh, at first, just uh, module by module. So it consists just few classes. The main class is the main. Uh, it just uh, in is the, uh, the instances of my main object, then starts a timer, it's a hardware timer, and every time it sets a flag, then on my main loop, I'm checking that uh, flag and do the logic part. Let's see into the cube. Uh, mainly it has uh, just the, uh, some inits in it and the callback. This is where it starts uh, getting to be a little bit more interesting. So at first, I'm reading the, um, the data from the accelerometer. Uh, then I'm checking the state of the accelerometer. Uh, this state is a high level state. So for example, is it rotating in the right direction? Is it rotating in, in the other direction? Uh, what position is it? Is it looking up on X coordinate or Y or Z? So whatsoever. So if uh, the state didn't change, then I'm counting, and uh, with that uh, I called it persist. I don't know is it the right thing to call it, but as you know, uh, the two hardest things uh, in IT is, I mean, in in software is making a good chase or naming things. So I called it uh, persist. And so I have these two data, the orientation, the rotation, I mean three, orientation, rotation, and how much time did pass from the last uh, status change. And from this, I will go to the handle uh, state, and uh, after that, just displaying the new thing. Now in the handle, we can see at the green parts are the incoming data, what we have, <coughs> and these orange parts are the cube states, <coughs> I call, call them cube states. So at first it's sleeping, then I can wake it, wake it up to standby, then I'm uh, choosing a uh, side, and when I choose the side, I can manipulate the actual number, what I choose, then I can start the countdown, and if Mm, something happens, for example, the countdown is uh, going down, then it will uh, go to R mode or N mode, or I can manually stop it by changing the orientation. Yep, so is the clear. Okay, so this is the plan, but how did it go? At first, I just um, made module by module, then try to put it together, but let's see. Oh yeah. This is working. Simple. Check the other one. This is a little bit more complicated. I was checking the rotation on the free direction, and you can see an independent uh, display is connected to uh, different axes. That's nice. Okay, let's make some harder stuff. Working with wood is pleasant because uh, you don't have to debug it <laughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, and the result is in front of you so if you screw it then make another one or I don't uh, of course you have to be careful with your fingers and stuff ah and it looks really nice from the outside and really ugly from the inside as usual <laughs> okay also my table is all a mess uh, yeah, the last two days uh, I spent a lot of time with this because I thought, oh, I just put it together is an easy job. No. Why am I putting this crap here? It's a hermit crap. So currently this is the state of the cube. Uh, I just found out today morning it cannot fit in. <laughs> 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 so the solution uh, is what a hermit club is doing when it grows too big, uh, this cube has to find a new home. 
Okay? But before the takeaway, I'm trying to demonstrate it with a scissor. Ooh, let's turn it on. Huh? 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 Come on. So we can see different numbers. Here is 30, here is uh, 50, and the top there is 40. So if I'm rotating it slowly, then it will choose 40, and in theory every display should uh, show 40. Hmm. Oh, yes, it does. And now if I'm rotating, I'm adding to it in this direction, but I'm going subtract from it. Oh, it's cool. Okay, it's 27, and now if I flip it, so if I change the orientation of it, it will start. Let's see. Oh, yeah! <laughs> oh. Okay. So, so. It is a. Uh, yeah, I have to fine tune it a lot. So what are the takeaway? Yes, doing stuff is fun. I think most of the software engineers here know pain is also a thing what we like. <laughs> yes, I have to get some proper equipment because uh, the soldering was made with the hand gun solder thing and that's not good. So I, I burned myself a lot. Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> so next time <laughs> I have to measure it because before I, I do it. Uh, yeah, this is a thing what I was talking, uh, thinking a lot to learn these two things. And uh, this year I think I will start learning uh, these two technologies. Uh, yes, and time management is still my weakness, so if you um, don't look for it, you can find yourself in a situation like me to uh, make a presentation about something that is not done. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all. <laughs>